Hi everybody, I'm Rank Summerday, STEM Director for the Girl Scouts of the Desert Southwest. And this week, we're still talking about dirt, but we're gonna throw an art piece into it. Now, I like to paint, and if you've seen my How to Draw a Coyote Skull, you know I draw stick people. I'm not the best artist. But a couple years ago, I was taught how to paint, and while I wouldn't say I'm good, I love it. It is so nice just to take that brush and put it on some paper and create something. It's so relaxing until it gets frustrating because then you start like messing with it and futzing around with it. But in this crisis situation, I have not been able to get to the art store to buy more paint. I've been doing a lot of painting. So I've run out of some colors and I thought, especially brown, because I like to paint landscapes and down here in the desert, we have a lot of brown. And I was like, well, how can I make more paint since I can't get out to buy any? And then I realized we talked about dirt last week and the different colors of dirt. And I went, oh, you know, I wonder if I can make paint out of good old fashioned dirt. And you know what? You can. I also realized we didn't talk about everything I said we were going to talk about. We didn't talk about where dirt comes from. So we're going to cover that topic on this week's session called the art of dirt. So the big question is, where does dirt come from? If we look closer and zoom in really tight, we can see that dirt or soil actually comes from rocks. That's called the parent material. Over time, and I mean a lot of time, wind and rain wear away at that rock. That is called erosion. So that gets deposited through water and wind, other places, and it builds up. Maybe some leaves blow in from a local forest or a farmer's field. Dirt can travel a long way, that's for sure. Eventually, that rock wears down and now we have different horizons. Deep down is that bedrock, but we can have many different layers of soil on top. So here we are out in the desert and what we're going to do is we're going to get a soil sample here. Now this soil here appears to have a red tint to it. It's kind of on the pale brown side with some red tint and I know that this soil comes from those mountains. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a soil sample here. I'm just going to use my trowel and put it in the box. Nothing fancy here. And we're going to take this back to the office so we can do some, some testing on it. We're going to figure out what that soil texture is. So I'm a few miles farther down the road. And you can see here this soil has a lot more red to it. Okay, Those mountains are the same mountains from before. We're just a little farther away from them. So we're going to get some of this soil and take it back to test it. Did you know that there are different types of soil all over the United States? This map shows dominant soil orders. Soils are classified by what minerals can be found and how they were formed. And if you see all these wonderful colors are different types of soil. Did you know that each state has its own soil profile? Did you know that each state has its own state soil profile. This one is from New Mexico, and here is the one for Texas. In order to prepare our soil to get ready to paint, we need to grind it into a fine powder. We can do that with an old spoon and a piece of paper. Notice I have a plastic tablecloth down on top of my work surface to keep it nice and clean. Pour a little bit of your soil onto an old piece of paper and use the back of your spoon to slowly grind it into a fine powder. Every once in a while, you may come across a small pebble. That's okay, just pick it out and put it off to the side. This may take some time, so keep grinding. The finer the powder, the better your paint is going to be. When you think you have enough and it's in a fine enough powder, pour it into a bowl so we can make our paint.
Some of the supplies we need this week are, of course, dirt, okay? Um, little containers or cups. I like to use ice cube trays, old ones that don't hold that much water anymore. Maybe they have a crack. I really like white or clear because that way you can see the colors. You need a spoon. You need some glue, okay? It can be any brand, just white glue. You need some water. And then you need like an old plastic spoon or something to stir with. And of course, paintbrush, paper, that kind of thing. I like having a cover down. You can see I have my plastic cover here, okay? And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do so to mix our own paint. So I'm gonna adjust this down here so that way you can see what I'm doing. Now in my ice cube tray, I am going to pour a little bit of glue Maybe this, I don't even know if you can see how much I have in there. There you go. Like less than the size of a dime. You can always add more, okay? I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it. Oh, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon or something like that. I'm gonna take my old spoon, I'm gonna take the handle, and I'm gonna mix that around. So that glue really kind of gets dissolved in there, okay? And then I'm going to take some of my dirt, okay, not too much. You can always add more. You can't take it out once you put it back in there. I'm going to pour that in, and I'm going to mix it around. So I have a kind of a color that I want. This is a little too, little too liquidy yet. I'll add a little more soil in there. There we go. I want the consistency of, like, not watercolor paint, but maybe like acrylic paint, okay? And this is just gonna take some practice till you figure out how much you need. Oh, and see there, I went too far. And now it's not paint consistency. So I'm gonna add a little water. Just enough. There we go, now I've got a nice dark brown color, okay? I'm gonna wipe off the end of my spoon here. And I'm gonna to continue to put some of my other colors of soil. Okay, I've got that nice red. Oh, let me put some glue in first. Some drops of water. Not as much water as I did last time. I'm gonna stir it around. You could use a toothpick to stir it around. I happen to have this old spoon. Okay, and I'm gonna throw some of my red in there. Ah, oh, there we go, that was the right amount. Like I said, it just is gonna take some practice. You can always add more, but you can't take it out, all right? So there, look at those two main color differences, right? We have a really dark brown, almost black. Now we got a brown red, like a brick color. All right, so I'm gonna finish doing this part let me show you how we got to this part, okay? I'm gonna back it up a little bit here. All right, so I've got my paint mixed up. I'm gonna see if I can tip it here a little bit. You can see I've got some different colors, okay? I've got a lighter brown, a darker brown, a black, almost dark black. That one was some really sandy. And then I have one down here. You can see it's a dark color, but there's a lot of liquid floating on top. I made that one kind of runny to see if we can get some really good texture, all right? So I got my paper here, you can see on my clipboard. I also have my cup of water to rinse my brush. I have my, I have my paintbrush here, okay? And I'm just gonna use some of this lighter color down here. You can see here, we can get this painted out. Now one nice thing is, you can always go back, add some clear water. That's a really light brown going on there. I can, I can do some watercolor techniques with this, Okay, I can add some water and really kind of make it almost opaque. All right. And take some of my, my uh, little bit of darker brown here. Mix that up a little bit. And, oh, that's a good color brown right there. Now, obviously, this is not going to be like a Rembrandt or anything. As I said, I draw stick people, but I do love to paint. Okay, 
Make this a little bit darker there. Now, to make it darker, okay, all I need to do is just add it a little thicker. I can do some shading with it. I can also come back after this dries a little bit and put another layer on. All right. So that really runny one that I showed you, let's see what we got here with that. This one's going to be kind of runny, so I'm going to dip my brush a little bit. Wow. That is awesome. You can't get this with regular paint. Look at those speckles in there. All right, we got some good texture going on. Very thin paint. You cannot get this with this kind of texture and this type of uh, interesting looking. Interesting looking paint with regular old watercolors. This is something brand new. Get some of my really dark color here. Now you may have to keep stirring it up because a lot, if your sand, if your uh, soil is kind of sandy there, it's kind of gritty. So you do an outline here. Get some shading in with our darker color. There we go. Make another little. Wow, look at that dark color. That's awesome. Well, we don't want too much glue, right? Because we don't want it to be too thick. We want the thickness to come from the soil. Kind of make a little more texture there. You can see all those little pieces of grit. That's from all the sand from that one soil I have. And you can see here, oh, let me, now my, I don't have brand new paper towels. I have some old paper towels. Okay, I've been using a lot. Now, this is the, the stuff that made it dark. And you can see there how sandy that is. But look at that nice dark color. So that sand, those sand particles being the largest soil particle size, Feather that in a little bit more. Get a little shading going on there. Oh, not too bad. I am not Rembrandt, however. Definitely not Van Gogh. I do have both my ears. Okay. Let's add a little cap to this guy here. All right. Boy, we, I mean, and all I used was two different, two different soil types here from two different locations. And look at all the different colors I have. All right, now I said I did have some, some red, some real red. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some more, add some red. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add some water first. You figure out what works best for you. If adding the soil and then the water and then the glue works that seems to work best for me but if you notice that you're better off with the glue first and then your soil but remember just add little bits at a time you can always add to it oh that's a nice dark red color you know what? i'm going to try adding a little more glue to that see if that thickens it up gives it a dark, little bit darker color going on there all right, now remember, before you do any of this, before you grab spoons and the ice cube, you know, grab the ice, ice cube tray out of the refrigerator, dump out the ice cubes and use a good one, before you do any of this, ask your parents first, get set up in a nice location, make sure you have your protective covering down. Okay. We got some darker red here. I think we'll go in and add some. Yeah, that's a little bit different. See if we can add some stripes to our, there we go. It's a little hard to see in this video, but it is a little bit dark. It is a little more red than this. It's the problem with sometimes you have lighting or whatever. So I just added some stripe, stripes to my mushrooms there. So, there we go. We have now painted with dirt. Okay. And this has started me thinking, well, this is great browns and everything. Never know what color you may have. Um, but what other colors could we get from nature? Think about all the things out there. Leaves, flower petals. Hmm. 
So I'm going to put a challenge out to you guys. I want you to go out and see how many different colors, kind of go on a nature scavenger hunt. How many different colors can you find in nature that you think you could turn into some paints? Because I'm wondering if I had some maybe um, rose petals or some yellow daffodil petals or some green grass, if I could grind that up with my spoon and get it really kind of a fine texture, add some, add some glue, add some water, and see what other colors I could come up with. I bet you there's a whole rainbow of colors out there that we could, that we could discover, okay? So I'm putting that challenge out to you. Go out, find the different colors, do a painting, post to this video, post to our comments on our Facebook page. Let me know what you've discovered. Let me know what you've created. And Girl Scouts, let me tell you, this is an excellent activity to help you with your art in nature badge. I know, right? So in order to clean up, what we do not want to do is we do not want to take this to the sink and wash it in the sink, okay? We do not want all that dirt going down in the sink, making a mess, clogging up the plumbing, okay? So anything that you have, like this was just, this was my brush with my water. I want to make sure I do clean my brush very well, get all that glue out, okay? We don't want any of the glue in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and my tray and my water, and I am gonna really put a lot of water in there to kind of help really dissolve that glue, kind of really liquefy it up. I'm gonna take this outside and I'm gonna wash it outside, okay? That way this glue and the dirt doesn't go down the kitchen sink or the bathroom sink. We don't wanna have any plumbing problems. All right, well, thank you very much for joining us. The Art on Dirt, who knew that you could paint with dirt. I'm so excited. I can't wait. And I can't wait to see your creations. So please feel free to submit your creations, put them on this video and wash your hands, be good, obey your parents, go out and create some fun art. Stay well, everybody.